<laughs> surprisingly. It's kind of funny. I I, uh, I found a tutorial on how to record just like a Discord call with Audacity, and it's like a mm. 11, talk about how honest folks used to be as little as six, seven, eight years ago in the in the YouTube tutorial game. It's an eleven yeah. minute and just how you know what an effect you know monetization and shit has had on that whole larger situation. This video is about eight years old, right? It's over a it was over ten minutes. Within the first thirty seconds, he's just like. Yeah, you can, so basically you can do this with Audacity. Here's, you know, if you really want to, here's how we're going to show you. But um, I'll be first to recommend that you just go and do it with OBS or Fraps because that is like 10 times more conducive to, to, to what we're trying to do here. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Yeah, that's because... So yeah, obviously, you, would, uh, you, you wouldn't see that in a, you know, a, a 75,000 sub uh, you know, car detailing video from a Honda bro. Who, um, <laughs> who, you know, has uh, three ad breaks for his, uh, you know, rebottled simple green, uh, you know, all-purpose cleaner that he sells you at, uh, at three <laughs> times retail, and uh, you know, has or a, some has sort of uh, referral program, so you can sell it to your friends too. Yeah, promo code. <clears throat> big, oh, I, I big, big, like a full big dick and, Honda. And Mary, you know, Mary Kay joke, yeah, but uh, you know, MLM hood shit. Um, trade, <sighs> that might be the, pod, the first podcast name, honestly. So, first episode team. <laughs> it just has no MLM hood shit. The podcast. <laughs> well, this would be that would be episode one. Obviously, the uh, I can't remember what it stands for, but the the podcast is called RTS. I, I think real talk stupidity, but uh... that's awesome. I, I I I approve of that. That's great. So, I'll probably leave all that in and. uh I don't know where Tom is, so we'll just, we'll just get right to it here. So yeah, e- even everybody, this is uh, this is Matt and Evan with the the Broken Gears crew. We're gonna cross upload this first one if I never explained that, um, and eventually maybe make this its own feed and and or channel, whatever. I mean, we'll we'll play it by ear. I'm doing it for three. Yeah, hours, whatever. Or up to like thirty subs. So I mean, things are obviously paying off. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, All right. this, this let's is, start monetizing. Uh, Come on, um, people can send me money anytime they want. Um, <laughs> I'll take money for pretty much anybody too. Ah, no, so um, yeah, everybody. This is uh, this is Matt and Evan with uh, with RTS. Definitely dif- different from uh, from Broken Gears, even though this is going up on the same channel. Uh, to uh, Mike, who is definitely I almost said he's no longer with us. He's not with us tonight. <laughs> he is fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that, that, that would have day, taken a uh, real serious was, turn. Was going to <laughs> was going to join us tonight, but um, so this is a premise that that I had to an extent, but he. You know, him and I had some you know, sort of parallel thinking at the time, so uh, I will borrow his term, uh, his, his choice of words to describe the, the larger venture as, uh, quote, um, you know, d- talking about our fucked up lives and, uh, and everything going on with them without, uh, um, when, we don't wanna feel, when we don't feel like talking about Airsoft, uh, which is obviously most of our existence, that we want to talk about Airsoft, right? We just you know, kind of go out, head to head to work, you know, see what... Uh, Susan from accounting thinks by way of like new HBA engines. Like this is all we do. But um, for, yeah, for the I mean, other times, I, for the uh, other times, uh, these are this is what we're doing here. So we might have Tom shuffle in later. And I said Mike's out tonight, but uh, but you got us at least. So, um, what the fuck were we just talking about? Car shit. Then, um, oh yeah, yeah. So oh, we were just making fun of YouTube videos yeah, and how YouTube everything videos. needs to make money now right. and. How uh, you know there would be 30, 30 minutes of ads? Yeah, yeah and and my, my main thing, I guess my main point in all that was just like how remarkably tight the time horizon has been. And that video is from eight years ago. And monetization was not a new thing. The year I was in college, you know, twenty uh, twenty twelve thirteen. Um, I mean, you it was more really just like big channels ran ads and big channels had sponsorship. That was about it. I mean, I think. I don't know when Patreon and shit like that started, but I mean, nobody really had one. And, uh, yeah, it was just funny to hear some guy be like, oh, yeah, you know, here's my tutorial on how to do something. But, um, yeah, I, mean, if you're I, do I it think an entirely like entirely disparate way, feel free, because I'm the first to advocate that. No, I was going <laughs> to say, I think 2012, like, podcasts were just starting to become a thing. And the idea of monetizing that wasn't even a, a thing yet. You right, know, it's well, kind of like, it was kind of like the easy, uh, offshoot of blogs and most blogs. I mean, maybe they had some some uh, monetized ads on there to some degree, but it wasn't. You know, it, any any blog of any repute or worth reading generally uh, didn't have like pop ups and all that shit. And right. 
uh, you know, it's obviously less intrusive in YouTube, but it's it's still much more prevalent. Hundred um, percent. No, that was an interesting perspective. Is that not someone who blogged or, or read them quite as heavily as as perhaps you did? And that's, obviously, that's absolutely fine. Um, so, actually, twenty twelve is your, and I'm sure there you know that has some merit. I'm probably just not as informed as as I should be, but I feel like a lot of shows. Um, specifically harkening back to like just just who come the major players that come to mind in like the uh the non dan carlin history space like it's it's almost amazing how many of them started quite precisely in 2015 i believe so that's probably one of those classic situations where like okay the the momentum was actually building for two three four years which would check out with again your point that things were probably actually sort of building steam or taking off to a point around like 2012 and again i'm the first to own up to probably just being ignorant here um but yeah it's weird how that works with a lot no, of i think that's stuff. i think that's reasonable i mean uh, pretty much not i mean you gotta think um i uh i graduated in 2005 from college and Facebook BCE, right? was la- yeah yes BC <laughs> yes 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 not BC um, unless you know you, you want to get on the fraudulent uh, archaeology group exactly it up and they oh, like dude I love it anything I love it even tangentially relevant go I mean oh god the freaking, uh, did you see the the waterline pyramid post that where we all go. No, I, you know, there's, there's there's so much like absurd, absurd. Sh- I did see, I did see one about the pyramids being posited as a receptacle for meteors for some reason. Like <laughs> the, the the leaps of logic on so many of those posts are fucking amazing. Because yeah, you know the ancient Egyptians, they knew their shit. But I mean, I love the idea that they created a uh, that, that they not only you know. Um, you might just have, a huge had, had net for fucking meteors for for no so, reason. I'm interested if like, is it the did aliens help them build that and that's what the the pyramids actually are, or did the ancient Egyptians just know how to build like some fucking ground based reverse uh, USG Ishimura from dead space? <laughs> to you know what? I I, th- I think it was actually um, what actually happened was like, did the uh, fire the Richard feathers and the big ones have like a mining laser. How did this like logistically work? <laughs> I think I think what happened was Richard Dean Anderson went did through one of the Stargates and the hardware. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, pardon my interruption. Oh so, no, I was just saying. Richard, I, I, how did Richard I, Dean Anderson I, get involved? Because I'm yeah. Really oh, good. Oh, I, I think it was, uh, you know, it was like a Stargate situation where okay. they they were just like, all your gods are fake. Here's a oh, way to turn your periods uh, pyramids into uh, giant uh, energy lasers. Oh, right. Okay. So as to, you know, to be able to defend the planet. Interesting. How do we get onto this? We, uh, uh, we were we were originally shitting on um, monetization, and then we were yes. talking about blogs, and then yes. we were talking about how in 2005. In like oh, five. Yeah, yeah. And then I was saying that, you know, at that point, Facebook had just come out. So if you yeah. went too far back from 2012 with podcasts and stuff, you'd be you'd be butting into that. And that's that was way, way before podcasts were a thing, which, you know, I think between... Beyond, like, you know, random shit of groups with, like, seven friends, which is kind of the trend that we're bringing back, you know, because everything from 20 years ago is cool again, so we're, we're really yeah, trying to yeah. finally make it big with our podcast well, I, catered to, to 17 people. I think um, 20, like, between 2005 and 2012, I think there was a leap in, like, uh cellular technology and like uh storage space where people could reliably actually stream this stuff in their car you said 20 while they're plus? yeah right I, like plus, yeah. I, no it's, I it's think... an interesting argument the only thing that comes to mind just being you know in, in my line of work uh i learned not horribly long ago not many people used it for years but that's actually the year google drive dropped kind of tangentially parallel to, to your exact point again as bandwidths were increasing and you know, and, and really oh, no shit. high speed and huh. became more ubiquitous. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I remember when Gmail was like an invite only thing and you 
get you were getting a uh, hundred gigs of storage with that, and everybody was like, "Holy shit, that's crazy!" You right, know. Right. Still there? Oh, I'm still here. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, oh, uh, the end of your point? I'm since, sorry if you were doing what you had to do. It was cool. No, no. I was just going to say, what, what have you been up to? I know you've uh, yeah, yeah. been so, um, working is... on, on um, bad company uh, smiley faces. And, yeah, a few and... things here. You know, that's actually a good point. We could uh, you know, basically, again, back to you know, trying to get, get into back, playing some small role in you know, bringing YouTube back to its 2004 glory six glory um maybe we could do like a just a slideshow of random shit for the video component of this thank you for that that inadvertent idea but um yeah so every, as everyone has probably already surmised we are as as mike would say uh, you know talking about our our fucked up lives and basically all the um legal non-airsoft related things that we uh, we do to you know numb ourselves from the various travails of this timeline and um yeah, projects. I guess we probably did a whole segment on, on projects and things of that nature, couldn't we? Uh, yeah, what have I been up to? So I just, uh, actually just came in from the, the metal shop here, so why not um, do things of that sort for the uh, you know the hottest afternoon of the year so far, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. And I was just going to say, too, it's 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 hard for us to talk with, about our fucked up lives without Mike, because I feel Mike is really pivotal. Yeah, the in, headline show. Like the, yeah, I mean, we're really, yeah, exactly. I, I, he's he's definitely the headliner. Empires were not built in a day, I guess, where you are, the, or we are the, uh, you know, the dive bar opening act. And you know, I'm sorry, the, the headline show is just uh, is just not in the budget for tonight. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll definitely make uh, make good on that next go around for sure. He, he said that himself. You know, stuff happens. It's all good. Yeah. Um, or was I? So yeah, I'm actually banging out some actually perfect opportunity to uh, to shout out. I believe he uh, he follows the larger operation. Um, a uh, customer of mine, customer of mine, Anthony is uh, is who bought the large amount of uh, bad company coasters. I made a uh, these are four inch diameter by uh, circles, obviously by eighth inch plate. Um, just you know painted up like big old smiley faces, like the one inch tag, one inch and two. In, uh, one inch and one and a half inch there we go uh tags i do up for um you know airsoft uh grenades and other throwables and and just gear for you know for fashionable fashionable purposes and uh yeah it went pretty good he uh actually originally ordered six i told him uh, none of them really quite came out as good as i'd like because i'm a fuck up and i painted or i base coated them on um on top of an old pallet so a bunch of uh you know as soon as i flipped one side over even after a good day to dry um i a bunch of, uh, you know, wood fibers got stuck to them, and I buffed most of that out, but they got a little gritty, and some black paint got everywhere as soon as I, uh, I started painting them with the stencils. Shouts out to Tom, who may or may not pop in tonight for, for 3D printing those for me, as my machine is kaput, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, so anyway, I banged out a batch of 10, just for, for the sake of evenness, and uh, made, him a, made him a good offer if he wanted to get these other four out of my sight, and he was like, full send. So, I, uh, now have room in the budget to order myself a second set of coveralls after four and a half years, um, rather than wash <laughs> the the ones that uh, you know look like I've been stabbed in them four times. Um, so that's fun. I can you know weld again without giving myself any more sunburn than I have to, or uh, God forbid, getting my other set dirty. And uh, yeah, that actually is is the main project that that came to its logical conclusion this weekend. I have uh, some metal signs going up soon of just um eve online corporate logos that project you've seen the, a few of those photos but uh oh yeah those are those printed. were really cool Thanks. i can't believe how clean those looked for for using a bandsaw oh uh, yeah no dare i say i i mean um bigger curvature isn't the worst problem as long as we're talking new uh outer curves or was that concave rather than convex so what's a dome concave, yes yes um, yeah like Con trigger, convex is is, is yeah. inner so as long as it's um, again of a decent size and an outer curve, you know, if I have to cut a bunch of pieces away, I will, and then follow up with a bench grinder, a hand file, whatever. You know, it's all all handwork. Um, for full full context, everybody, this is to, uh, just kind of supplementing my other metalworking misadventures. I have been uh, looking at doing all kinds of different projects by way of like um, metal signage here, and uh, one of the first projects again, it's mostly just personal stuff for now but i do actually have uh, one or two folks interested in some commissioning some work at some point including uh my my new patron anthony um 
So yeah, those are are approaching their their end here. Actually, they're pretty much all painted up, or uh, or will be tonight. And I may even have a nice photo or two ready before this uploads of uh, of them all mounted, the two Eve Online Corporation logos, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, that was a. Uh, that was this week. I have uh, the back plate for the big one all painted, and I found some perfect, uh, just big round head. I think uh, whatever. What's the? Is it three six? No, there isn't a. Th they never, don't call it a three sixteenth screw. I think it's a number fourteen right below a quarter inch. Is that sixteenths of an inch? Then I don't fucking know. Um, but I just found, I found like a perfect size sheet metal screw. And, and yeah, there's, there's there's so many different. Uh, yeah, because it just becomes variations. Drill sizes, of... obviously, standard drill sizes. You just go all the way down to the bottom in sixty fourths of inches. But yeah, screws are, are screws and bolts and shit are weird. I believe before a qu or a quarter inch in, or below a quarter inch, it turns into like a numerical thing. I assumed it was sixty fourths of an inch, but um, yeah. So yeah, those are uh, those are about done. Got a couple of little, little custom orders forged wise for some candle holders and a, and a door latch I just painted earlier. Um, yeah, things are things are That's happening cool. as I'm told. Cool. To say. Uh, what's uh, what's going on at your end? Working on anything fun? Any uh, any interesting research? You're our, our resident academic, or the uh, the closest thing to it. How do you feel about that? Uh, uh... Uh, yeah, I, it's, I don't know. That's that's a lot of responsibility for. Right. Well, I guess it's not really because <laughs> none of us none of us are very smart. So I guess right, it's right, right. a low bar. But um, yeah, I, most of the stuff I've just been researching has been for my my dad's collection. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of figuring out either what certain insignia is or how much certain stuff is worth or um, just kind of trying to date or figure out the uh, theater of manufacture for some of this stuff I'm and sure. it gets it gets uh, very complicated very quickly unfortunately well, <laughs> you know there's there's uh, Vietnamese made versus Korean made versus US made and then there's World War II stuff which is there's Aussie and there's English and there's German and there's Italian and there's US made uh versions of us insignia so it's and they all have their own kind of little intricacies or idiosyncrasies that you have to try and figure out and then there's like fakes and repros it's it's just it's you know, and that's just that's just the patches. Uh, then there's like books and and uniforms and stuff too. So that's that's like absorbing ninety percent of my time right now which uh, you know i'm enjoying it it's just sure. it's, it, it gets it gets a little complicated sometimes to try and uh, accurately figure out what some of this stuff is right right it's uh i believe what the kids call a rabbit hole they may or may not have uh, have fallen down to, to some extent is that yes is that? very much it's 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 no uh it's no hot wheels re restoration but it's it's close right right it's still a lot of work um, no, that all sounds pretty cool. I know you, you keep me posted with with relative regularity on a lot of some of your uh, your more interesting finds, and it's a yeah, it's quite a collection. Um, yeah, it's uh, like uh, it's it's very hard to understand how some of this stuff came to be in the U.S., let alone in this you know in the Northeast. Um, like that that Israeli paratrooper. Uh, insignia that I sent you the one yeah, time yeah. Um, but there's also a bunch of Chinese Civil War medals that I found um, yeah there's probably 50 of those that he has that I I can't imagine where the hell those came from but <laughs> um, he's got he's just got a bunch of weird stuff I mean he's got it's all cool but it's just like it's a little mind-boggling to try and figure out where some of the stuff came from right interesting though. One way to keep no it's like i said it's it's interesting from a historical perspective and i'm i'm learning certain stuff that i i didn't know uh historical or historically related right. of certain specialized units that existed and, and stuff like that um but yeah, it's it can be a little time consuming. Hundred uh, percent. What have you been? Uh, 
watching lately anything I mean we have to talk about last night and one of my probably one of my new favorite quasi shit fest sci-fi movies <laughs> you there it's there. it's funny because that's kind of one of those movies that I I think you cut out for a moment if you said anything I uh, oh I, no no, no. Yeah, I was saying I just about split second with Rutger Hour <laughs> as uh, as I learned about via Rand, one of those random Facebook posts that uh, Facebook just decides it's going to show you because it's become you know come under the impression that it might uh, might interest you. This was you know the point three percent of times uh, they were correct, um, and I, I happened to upon this post by some third rate you know movie discussion, not a review page per se, but just sort of you know movie enthusiast page. I believe ostensibly more like horror focused and. Uh, and it was a whole write-up on this movie called Split Second, where uh, where Rutger Hauer plays a somewhat uh, a, a detective who's you know one one bad day away from from permanent suspension, hunting a serial killer, and and things do not uh, end up appearing how they seem at the beginning, to say the least. But it's it's interesting too because it's it's like at the t- I think it was 1992 or 93 yes. or something like when that movie was made, yeah. and it's set. In I think 2008, <laughs> and it's set in lo- like a flooded London. Yes, and it's it's like a quasi cyberpunk yeah. type setting, and it has a lot of this energy. You can see, you know, left left, right, and center. Uh, some of the it's this is one of the rare situations in these times where uh, something halfway worth watching is uh, free on Prime right now, and is also not like an original or some nine year old TV show. Uh, so you know what I'm it kind of reminds me of out. too is uh, hardware. Oh, I think I heard of that one, but anyway, my, I, my, I know my you've heard of that one because I remember us talking about how it's actually based on a 2000 AD um, presents story, oh. um, okay. and they actually got in a lot of trouble for that because they basically ripped off the uh, oh. the uh, the uh, plot line of it, and then. Um, I think John Wagner had written the original uh, story, and they ended up having to give him writer's credit and stuff. Hilarious. But it's it's got kind of the same energy. It's it's much less goofy, um, but it's got the same sort of aesthetic to use a overplayed term. Yeah, yeah. And I was just beginning to say uh, Amazon is cool in that at least when you're watching on um, on a computer, I don't know if it's just our sh- i've heard of it working on other tvs it's probably just our shitty roku where it doesn't work right um but th- just like the uh, trivia pop-ups on the pause menus uh one of them oh yeah, yeah. Up earlier on and actually stated that uh, f- for some reason it was reevaluated at some point but it was going to be set in uh you know in obviously the same larger you know universe they ended up fleshing out but in uh, la and a lot of parts of it do oh. still uh you kind of have that yeah i can see that but just kind of cool but yeah, it's um, uh, it's it's funny how um, prime to a certain degree, but I, I don't know if you mess around with Tubi at all. Yes, Tubi has like just some good shit. Yeah. Some really wild stuff um, that either you know I haven't heard of before or I haven't seen in forever, mm-hmm. and it's you know with the way that a lot of these streaming services are going, the the commercials aren't any worse than say prime or am uh not very well not netflix quite yet but hulu or any of those the ad with the ad supported plans yes yes um and yeah no to your point about tubi they're kind of like the new uh the, the new at the lower level what um you know stars was among the premium cable networks a, a few years ago that they did uh you know no one talked about it because something you know was was big on on hbo or skinamax at any given time but um, no, they were doing some some interesting stuff and and continued to for for quite a while. Uh, Tubi in particular, just back on on topic directly. Uh, my cousin actually uh, works in film, and uh, just one well maybe a year or so ago now, a little over a year, won uh, some script writing contest, and I believe it is being adapted into some sort of like TV movie by uh, by Tubi. Um, last I heard, sometime this year. So we'll definitely shout that out. Oh, that's cool. In future episodes. Um, if uh, if that comes to be yeah actually I was just texting her yesterday I'll have to follow up and see what's going on with that but it was absolutely them that were uh, pro- that would be producing it if is it uh, is it the death approaches that would be fucking hilarious episode one <laughs> um, yeah I'll, I'll send her that next so uh, 
but yeah, so we were talking about that, and um, yeah, how long ago did you watch the movie? I mean, I'm just trying to figure out how you know, what level of, of conversation. Uh, split you second. Um, yes, I'm sure it's. A... Uh, the last time I watched it was probably maybe six months ago, but I, oh, I mean, okay. I rented that. Yeah. I rented that on VHS as a kid a sure. bunch of times. Okay, that's hilarious. The timing worked out that well then that I discovered it. Uh, oh, yeah, dude. As soon as you mentioned it, I was I like, oh, fuck, yeah, dude, you got to watch that movie. That movie's great. I thought you were going to say, or you, you remember it from, you know, 10 years back, which is one thing, and we could probably still have that conversation. But, yeah. <laughs> um, no, this is one thing that really spoke to me. And, again, we're not going to sit here and talk about this shit like a, you know, like whatever you think the, the top five are by way of, like, you know, Francis Ford Coppola's work. But because um, it's just, you know, objectively... You know, it's got a, I think, a six point one on IMDb, and it is on like the more fun end of movies, which of, is of that for. Caliber. You know, it's. Not I was gonna say for for IMDb for that to have a six point one. That is like with that, that's an enjoyable amount, modern action movie. Yeah, yeah like the, the like, it's not bad. You know, it's a, the type of uh, the type of bullshit that gets high ratings on there. That's that's honestly way higher than I would have thought. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, and and just how uh, again critical per capita they generally are over there so this is again get the idea out of your head that most things that get a six on imdb um are you know the movie equivalent of you know to most people are the are the movie equivalent of you know getting a 60 on your math test it's just not the case and uh one thing i was thinking about working on some projects today not that those projects in any direct way relate to the movie but i just you know watched the movie late last night and was, was thinking about it more is how um well, A, it's you know, sort of a classic uh, proper horror trope, if you will, I guess, where the um, entire, uh, you know, uh, the, the monster's entire existence and, you know, and, and motivations and, and origin story aren't completely fleshed out by the end. Um, I particularly thought it was interesting about the... And, and not that they beat this over your head from, from one perspective or the other, but... Uh, the um yeah you would say the the implications of some level of religious over uh not overtone but religious element in terms like okay was this thing you know what uh you know actually inspired the idea of like a demon is it quite literally some sort of demon where did it come from was it uh you know they, obviously they, they tie it back to some some pretty hokey uh lore if you will but it's it still does it does the job in terms of like you know victims being particular zodiac signs and uh they're it, it, the monster is he, he killed somebody a couple or it killed the uh, rutger Hauer's partner quite a quite a ways before was it three years i think before the movie oh yeah it was something like that but and, i uh, i think the 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 fact that some of this stuff is a little hokey yes. it can it can kind of get away with it because it it's Oh, it's hokey in a really it's good it's way. a yeah. good yeah and it's a good movie but it's also a movie that kind of skirts the line well between being a serious movie but not taking itself deadly serious yeah. which can be you know for any movie can be kind of tricky 100%. um but this one you know it's it's silly enough in certain spots that you're kind of like okay yeah I'll, I'll you know I'll I'll roll along with this this thought process yeah and speaking to that too, um, I don't know if you've ever seen it. it uh, John Carpenter's *Prince of Darkness* has a a similar kind of thought process in terms of connecting a sort of science fiction concept with religion. Okay. Um, it's not that it's not like it's it's a good John Carpenter movie. It's not his best, but it's the theory behind uh, a lot of it is very interesting. It's okay. it's worth a watch. Yeah, I might do that tonight. I uh, that was not one. I was on a John Carpenter kick a little while ago. That was this. This was definitely not one I, I ever ended up getting to. What? Uh, which ones have you seen? Of his work, I mean, it was remarkably late in life that I watched The Thing all the way through. That was six seven. Oh, years ago. oh shit, um, man! Oh, it, it was actually. A, I shouldn't say that. A couple years before that, I, I made it through. You know, Escape from New York and L.A. Um, have I ever I mean, told you not, the? about the novelization of um escape from new york no oh dude it's so <laughs> fucking cool like 
there was a, there was a point in time where movie novelizations were a big thing, obviously, yep. but the um, the novelization and I'll I, anytime anybody brings up uh, a Escape from New York, I ask them if they've seen uh, read it because there's a lot of stuff in Escape from New York that is you know like it, when you think about it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and it's you know i don't i don't think carpenter really cares that it doesn't make a whole lot of sense sure. um but the novelization explains a ton of stuff and actually makes really cool um concepts for a lot of these things so for example like when you think about it it's like why the fuck would um america just decide that manhattan is going to be the prison like this huge population and financial and cultural center of the country um and there's there's also sort of the throwaway line at the beginning that crime in the u.s in 1988 increases by 400 percent, and that's just kind of like it's it's just sort of a throwaway line and um once you think about it you're like okay why and right. in the novelization, they explain that because e- even in the movie, they talk about how uh, World War Three is still going on, or they at least allude to it. <laughs> and you know, which uh, Snake is a, a veteran of of that conflict, and yes. the president has, uh, you know, he's he's got uh, whatever is on the tape that he's gonna show to the chinese and the the russians to get them to stop but um the the thing about this particular version of war three is it was it started as a primarily uh chemical weapons exchange and the original um warheads with uh chemical weapons new york city was one of the first places hit and the the um chemicals weren't actually like they didn't actually kill people that it drove them insane so like they all started committing crimes and the united states government was like all right fuck it we'll just we'll wall off new york city because that's like the first place that got hit we'll throw all the crazy people in there like um the uh the commissioner of new york prison his his one son is actually an inmate in that place in the book because both both his kid like one, his one kid got shot looting in chicago and the other one got sent to um new york city but the last thing is too um they they talk about how all of the uh united states police force guys who you know are, are running the prison and stuff are all uh veterans of world war three who have all been exposed to enough gas that they're still functional but they're slowly going insane too so like that's why they're willing to do all this heinous shit to run the prison (laughs) so there's there's like a whole thing about um how snake lost his eye and why why he hates the government so much and it's just it, it's they they throw a lot of really interesting extra back information into the 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 storyline that sure. actually helps it make a lot more sense. Yeah, and that was definitely an IP where where things like that could be be benefit from or uh, a world where there was obviously enough going on that um, a novelization might actually be be that interesting which isn't to say that you know other ones years ago weren't also pretty freaking good i mean they're kind of a not something people seem to care about very much anymore depending on again what franchise you're talking about but no that's cool i actually entirely forgot there was one for escape from new york and that's really interesting that it's that uh again uh, enhancing to the experience yeah, I was I was shocked at how good it was. Um, but anyway, that was a, a, a very long tangent on what uh, John Carpenter movies you have watched, and I cut you off like two movies in. Yeah, 
Um, sorry, Discord is being weird. Where the fuck do I go to get back to our call? Oh, it's a DM with you. That would explain it. All right, possible technical difficulty. We're good. Um, what else? What else? What else? I mean, dare we even talk about uh, Ghosts of Mars and the? <laughs> you know what? Speaking of which, parallels. that that was originally supposed to be a uh, oh, movie, right? escape escape from Mars oh, movie. Oh yes, someone texted or someone commented on the Mutant Chronicles group the other day that it was supposed to be uh, one of um or Snake Plissken's next adventure. <laughs> Yes. And I don't know, have you ever seen uh, Assault on Precinct 13, the yes. original? Because, okay. totally dude, one. Yes. fucking, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Napoleon, Napoleon Wilson in that okay. movie is, uh, that was made like three years before um, Escape from New York. You can totally see how Napoleon Wilson was the prototype for snake bliskin like he's got the exact same fucking attitude and everything it's great <laughs> i'm gonna have to watch that again <laughs> um but yes other yes. other carpenter movies that i have seen let's uh you ever you i'm sure you've seen it in the mouth of madness yes again forgot that was a, I, I saw that quite recently too and that's that's probably the closest to a good lovecraft inspired movie as I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point, that is. I mean, I know it's kind of the the textbook fun way to to sound smart when you don't necessarily know very much about what you're discussing. To say, like, oh yes, this source literature is just unfillable, Evan. Let's go back to getting fucking tanked at book club. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, his like, uh, Lovecraft Lovecraft's was writing so wasn't great, but his stories were really good. Yeah, and and my only point is that what can you do there you know beyond what you know in the mouth of madness was uh was able to um i mean i liked uh color out of space a lot more than i was expecting as did um multiple friends of mine on all levels of the, the lovecraft enthusiast spectrum yes yeah, especially for being like in nicholas cage in, in, yes, involved yes. i mean it was it was way better than i would have thought and my only thing is, or my only point a second ago was that, like, it's it's interesting that, you know, if, it's one thing when, like, it's, you know, just the, die, you have a movie that flops or, or otherwise, or, you know, just didn't have the biggest budget and, like, you know, the diehards end up really liking it. And that's tremendous. You know, that's cult movies. I mean, they're, they need no explanation directly. Um, but again, it was interesting to hear multiple friends who obviously have a, a more casual understanding of Lovecraft and, you know, and have probably read a few of his stories at a certain point are like, oh, yeah, no, that was actually a really watchable, enjoyable horror movie. And, um, yeah, no, that's actually one of my favorites of his stories, so that was fun to see, and I, I really, again, liked it a lot more than I was expecting um, in terms of just this... Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of still I'm, I'm not over the surprised. My, my, my one, my, like, in terms of getting where people are coming from, and I'm not sure what, like, many of the main criticisms by people you know of any consequence were but like i could get if people weren't like even even that particular story um like i could get if people were not over the moon about like the body like the full-blown like conventional body horror elements um in a lovecraft movie that's not something you see a ton per se in his work um to the best of my recollection anyway uh so yeah, I don't know what it, what you think of of it. Over. You said you relatively enjoyed it overall. Any particular opinion here? Oh, you're cutting out a little bit. Oh, my bad. Mike was a little far away. Um, all I said was, uh, sorry, it's been a day. Uh, did, did you hear my bit about the like the body horror aspects and like I can get why <laughs> people didn't quite like that? I guess my only yeah, that's but my I mean, uh, question is like, okay, what uh, what, what David Cronenberg's done? I mean, that's basically his entire body of work is body horror so i don't think that's necessarily a uh reasonable uh, critique sort of critique of it but i mean that was who directed color out of space right no 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 no. uh he's he did like the fly remake and he's done um 
uh, Crash. He's done a, a shit ton of movies, Scanners, but oh, yeah. like he's he's done a ton of body horror stuff. So people saying they don't like body horrors, they're not, especially horror fans, not really a, a reasonable criticism. Um, I, the one thing that always surprises me is that nobody's ever done a movie of Shadow Over Innsmouth, which is probably oh, yeah. the most filmable and the most modern plot of any of his works. You know, in the sense that it's uh, there's a lot more action and movement in it, as opposed to somebody r- basically writing about. Well, you know, I heard this story once from this man in yeah. this part of town who <laughs> said that this is what happened to him one time. Yeah, I, I want to say there's a short film or some such. I mean, it's just, there's like 10 Lovecraft stories that kind of blur together in my head in terms of hearing one's name and thinking another. But I swore I came across, again, it was you know, some little YouTube short or, or something along those lines. Um, yeah, and there there may be something that I've, I, I'm just not aware of, but yeah. I, if there was any Lovecraft answer. thing that was ready or uh grist for a big budget movie yeah shadow shadow over in smith i feel like is is the the one mm-hmm. that it would be but you know whatever i think like i said i think shadow over in smith is a, or uh in the mouth of madness is about as close to a, a good lovecraft movie as i uh, i could expect other than colorado space yeah, and it looks like just upon a, a quick YouTube search here, nothing's really coming up except uh, readings. So there must not. Be gotcha, gotcha. Anything. So true to your to your point, there does not appear to be an adaptation out there yet. Again, oh, going just back to the record. podcast riff, yeah, it's, it's uh, people about... reading reading stories is, is basically <laughs> oh, a, an offshoot of the, the podcast is, is phenomena. Perfect that you just cut out. Yeah, yeah. Right, that's which is obviously what what we'll be doing for the next uh, next episode, right? Oh yeah, but uh, you know, I'm not going to read something shorts. like Lovecraft. I'm going to read, shorts, yeah. you know, Sun Tzu or you know, Romance of the Three Kingdoms or something, you know, something more straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Some, something something less <laughs> less uh, you know meandering. Sure, sure. The Prince we might be able to get to. That's a uh... That's a roadmap. Oh my god! (laughs) The Inferno, Dante's Inferno. (laughs) Let's do that. (laughs) We cover everything here. Actually, I I would probably pay money to hear Mike read uh, Sun Tzu or or uh, Dante. We'll we'll have to force him to next time. Then it's all public to me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I have a copy of Art of War. I'll buy one of Inferno if I have to. (laughs) Oh, that'd be great. Mike reads. (laughs) Why do you feel those, uh, either of those particular works will be, will be fun with him? I mean, I agree, but. Oh, just because like, I'll, I'll, especially with Sun Tzu, like there's, I, I, I've heard of, I've heard of certain portions of three, the romance of three kingdoms are kind of goofy, but like the, just the, absolutist like axiomatic um tone of the the art of war where it's like this is always true and it always will be true <laughs> uh, is is just kind of ripe for for a an over the top reading 100% um yeah, I suppose we can do a little more here we haven't uh, talked about video games directly really at all it's a, a, anything Anything going on on that end? We're playing right now. Man, I've I've been in a drought. I've I've tried probably four or five different games on Steam and ended up returning them just because they they weren't quite what I was looking for. Um, I've been having trouble getting into anything other than you know like Vampire Survivors, which is so so mindless. It, it I don't even know if it really counts as playing. Yeah, I've heard this one. Yeah. Um, I don't know as much about what kind of game it is, but what uh, what just came out? I think Worth a Buy did a video on uh, V Rising. 
I've heard really good things about. Oh yeah, I've heard of that too. I it's I It's like an ARPG, I think, right? I, I don't know. Okay. Um I can't really get like a good idea of if it's good or not or really what it's about. Time to Google it. Um I kind of want to do Manor Lords, but I'm I'm at the point where I'm like I don't want to do any more early access shit. Yeah. <laughs> What about you? Have you been playing anything good? Oh, I was just reading about this V Rising thing. It almost sounds like low key, uh, like a tactics game in terms of like building up your operation and stuff. Sounds pretty cool. Awaken as a vampire, hunt for blood in nearby settlements to regain your strength and evade the scorching sun to survive. Raise your castle and thrive in an ever changing open world full of mystery. Fun. Gain allies online. Oh, okay. It's even uh, got some online components to it. And, uh,. Yeah, with all the DLC on, on sale right now, it's 13% off. Or it's, uh, it's only uh, $91 plus tax. Sure. sure that oh my god, you may as well get two copies of that. Right, yeah. Gift. Hey, make, make my own four-pack of, uh, of gift copies, right? Like back in the day. Um, yeah, what have I been playing lately? I'm kind of with you to an extent, not because, you know, it's uh, edgy and fun to, you know, say nothing appeals to you and that not much is, you know, and that, that everything sucks now. It's... It, 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 things aren't the case um obviously just coming off of uh, musical musical work schedules literally this past week i've finally transitioned into my my normal hours i've worked a different shift for the past three weeks now i don't know even for the very uh, generous pay i don't know how these people still do it in, in some lines of work where this is like the norm but i digress um i myself have basically just sort of come home and either worked on shit or vegged out on youtube myself um what I haven't been, though, what have I been playing? Uh, it's been a little while now, but I'm through probably the first... Yeah, a third is probably pushing it, but I'm, I'm around about there through uh, Mafia 3 after I finished 1 and 2 a little while ago. Good, uh, good stupid fun so far. And uh, I guess the new one's going to get announced, theoretically, potentially soonish, so that's cool. I oh, that's cool. Play... Yeah, I know you've enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh... Definitely, it's like really nails the the vibe of of like a I can't believe it's not sixties New Orleans. Um, I just really like all the aspects of it. You know, feeling like you're is it just slowly taking apart the villain's whole you know larger operation and and making it your own. It's a no. It's it nails a, a lot of things. I mean, it had some you know, it has some issues, and I get where a lot of people were coming from. I mean, you're you're, uh, there's a lot of people really when it came out and like how much drive-in there was. You could actually skip the uh, the commutes entirely of most missions were that weren't like you know chases in uh, the definitive edition of Mafia One, which was pretty neat. They got rid of it in two because they just kind of phoned in the, the definitive edition for that. Mafia Three's definitive edition I think is really nothing but like all the DLC bundles because it wasn't you know 23 years old uh, when those came out in 2020. But yeah, again, that's that's fun right now. Oh, uh, what else is in my top five? Oh, obviously, new Starship Troopers patch. We've played a few rounds of that since. I I think it's running a little bit better. My, you know, time will tell here. Uh, yeah, they've certainly changed a lot. Yeah. Um, and I I think some of it for the better. Some stuff still needs to get tweaked, but Things are going overall, little, I think it's a good idea. They want to, yeah, yeah. Um, Ranger is pretty cool with his lateral jetpack, which you can kind of use like a normal jetpack. You just sort of like jump off of even a small hill, you know, like a like a the way a bat takes flight. Um, and the other class has like the the more vertical jetpack now, which is kind of funny. Um, what else? What else? Uh, I got a few rounds just the other day of uh, of Deep Rock Galactic, and I think the new season for that just came out or uh, or starts soon. There's a there's a new monster that they previewed that almost did. Uh, crawls around on all fours like fucking Gollum, which is definitely a, a fun shake-up versus the, the more hmm. uh, conventional, you know, bug-like bugs of all different flavors they, they have so far. Um, just amazing that they're really developing uh, content for that still as, uh, you know, involved to develop as things like, you know, entirely as, you know, uh, mo monsters that really don't work very many ways like the, the others. So, that'll be fun to see. I mean, to, to get more into that. The board game is a fucking blast. We have, uh... Well, I didn't I mean, know there was a board game. That's yeah, cool. Uh, 
I think it's brought to market at this point, but uh, Tom pledged to the, the Premier Holy Shit pledge on the Kickstarter a while ago, which we're delivering... I think we played late 22 for the first time. Yeah, it was like that New Year's Eve. Anyway. Uh, yeah, really mm-hmm. cool That's models. Cool. Uh, the new Warzone models are, I believe, going to be made of the, the same material, the Sciacast stuff. So basically every bit of, of the durability of, you know, the old collectible miniatures games shit or, you know, or even like full-blown, you know, action figures or toys, but um, some really incredible fidelity in line with, you know, typical higher end board games or, or miniatures too. It's a, it's a really interesting material and it'll be interesting to see what, you know, that, uh, you know, what, what industry trends sort of follow that as a, in the years to come. Um, what else am I playing video game wise right now? I'm a few missions into to Homeworld 3. Obviously that was, you know, long overdue, both big picture and, you know, me playing it personally, my collector's edition was delivered what early last week i've only played a little bit um i'm willfully ignoring most media related to it i know some people were were pretty disappointed some people weren't i'm so far under the impression this is exactly the game we've been expecting to have been in development for for five plus years and and i'm otherwise pretty darn happy with with what i'm seeing so far um we'll see what's what once i finish the campaign etc um trying to think there's at least one other thing in my in my five most played on steam right that's why we've only that's how that works if i've only mentioned three games uh don't think it was hell divers 2 or even you know that, that that's a game i think anyone listening to this has heard of at this point um yeah there's one or two things i, I know there's a bunch of other stuff i have installed but I, you know, I, you know what I have had installed for a while is uh, is Aliens: Dark Descent. I, uh, I, I gotta gotta dive deep into that. Oh, you know what the um, I was it just reminded me with, with it being a tactics game. I started a fresh uh, Warhammer Mechanicus playthrough. After, I think it's been three years. I forget what the uh, the last played date on the on the Steam profile was when I first started. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a that's a game I instead of getting my mileage out of here. Um, no, it's a, definitely a lot of fun twists on you know the the more tactics game, more typical tactics game for, formula. Um, you have your sort of main your main guys, your full blown tech priests there, who have you know any meaningful amount of like customization and and obviously a much wider range of of potential equipment and, and abilities and you know are otherwise your your workhorse units. But you also have obviously the the main the main line units, but the uh, no, they do take up different slots when you're like getting ready to deploy on a mission. So certain certain just sort of like line units which get unlocked as you progress through the game, things like servitors, you know, uh, the melee and ranged Skitari, uh, Cataphrons, later even Castellans. Um, you know, you you pay the same currency you use for like uh, leveling up your your tech priest. You don't really buy equipment in this as such. You you find you know the the lore, You find the standard template constructs, and then it becomes unlocked to then give to basically as many units as you can. But you don't have like a finite amount of the equipment. And uh, certain units are basically like like servitors are the main line unit. You can um you can bring in the early game. And you can bring a functionally unlimited amount of particular units. Again, some of them just cost uh, Blackstone, is what the currency is called. But the servitors are free, and they are also um, they also generate uh, cognition points. So you don't just have so it's a entirely unless you want to you know sprint moving beyond your your normal move value. Uh, cog- cognition is basically the action point equivalent. And it's entirely divorced from movement. So you get your, your base movement. If you want to move faster, you can burn cognition. And then cognition is, is what you spend on all different guns and other abilities. And it's uh, it's regenerated in all different ways as the, the game progresses. So you can stand by the, the Necron tomb to if you're at the if you're there at the top of the turn or if you go past it at any other point in the in the turn, you can you know, you can collect that many cognition from there once and it you know it re ups every turn. You know, you can also do stuff like scan enemies, and uh, the servitors in particular are the free, you know, free sort of 
these sort of beat stick units, and any time they are attacked, they generate a cognition point, including when they die. So you're basically incentivized to sort of use them as freaking cannon fodder to, to be able to, to activate your other abilities. It's a fun dynamic. Um, that was definitely one of the better tactics games of the last few years, and arguably one of the. No, that sounds cool. Yeah, I mean, games too, yeah. it's it's probably uh, it's probably more interesting if you're a big fan of uh, 40k, yeah. or at least more more uh, conversant in it than I am at this point. But yeah. um, well, that sounds like a, a neat dynamic. It's at a least. tight little tactics game too. I mean, just totally out of you know outside of the 40k context, which again it does nail. Um, yeah, fun, fun one to check out on sale. All right, and yeah, that's I, I think my pathetic little rotation right now. Um, oh, before that, we were we were going to talk about Dark Descent. I know you said you've played a little of that, right? Uh, <laughs> I haven't. I my one buddy bought it, and he he said it was oh, it was good. Nice. He just it was kind of like Darkest Dungeon, where the stress mechanic is way overblown, and okay. he he kind of he he. he installed a mod to kind of tone it down because uh it was it was over the top otherwise okay and from there it became a little more playable we, we did discuss this in, in private yeah yeah he, he said it was he was said it was much easier to play then or much more tolerable neato yeah that's uh that's one i've bought a ways back and again have yet to to even fire up as i recall uh funny we we talk about a, a vaguely comparable 40k game though because uh doyle donahue did the soundtrack he did um Dawn of, all the dawn of war 2s um both battlefleet gothic games he's kind of a kind of a top three composers as far as you know what the you know what 40k sounds like which i thought was pretty funny because yeah i've listened to some of the dark descent soundtrack because i'm a lunatic and, and listen to a game's ost before i i buy or uh, or if i already own it before i play it uh sometimes and I'm like, oh wow, this stuff actually, this it sounds like his work. I mean, for anyone familiar, but like this, I could hear this working quite well in an aliens, in an aliens game, in in that sort of setting. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool, kind of out of left field, but really cool. Yeah, that's that's interesting crossover. Um, yeah, as a is what I'm sure will become one of our. One of our memes on our show, maybe after our first million followers, is uh, you know our old bit. It's uh, it's all connected. Right? Yes, it's all connected. Yeah. <laughs> we read about it on the uh, the fraudulent archaeology wall. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It was, it was. It's all connected back to uh, storing meteors. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, maybe that happens on uh, at the the Antarctica pyramids rather than the Egyptian ones. We'll we'll have to see and, and see what they think. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> well, we're just shy of an hour. I see. I think we're, you know, in a pretty good spot here. Just, just shooting the shit, doing what we got to do. Um, yeah, no, I think we're good. I, here, you know, so Tom, of course, didn't show up like an right, asshole. Yeah, no, but, he was, he was yeah that's fine. Tired from a standard round at airsoft today, which is fine. I mean, I know he always brings oh, perfect. Like 98 yeah, yeah. pounds of <laughs> shit. So, I, uh, you know, we we don't take that personally. Or, <laughs> Are here no, to throw no. shade at him for the change. We do that enough on broken gears. So, yeah, um, I think we'll we'll call it here, and we're gonna be doing more of these soon. So, if you guys are even remotely interested in our absurd, random ramblings, and I'm sure we'll get marginally coherent as we progress, uh, stay tuned. We'll probably upload at least a few more uh, to the the broken gears channel here, and then then make this its own feed. As, as I said, we we get a little bit more of a a coherent theme going, and. Uh, We'll go from there. So thanks for coming tonight. Thanks. See ya.